Hi, the episode is coming in just a minute. I just wanted to take a moment to let you know that we are doing a live podcast taping. I'll be interviewing Ethan of The Usual Boys on Sunday the 15th at House of Music in the ARV Gelände. It's going to be at Podfest Berlin, which is a festival including lots of podcasts. There's other music podcasts there, including Lost in Sound and Mixtape Menage, all Berlin-based. The other podcasts range from culture to history, educational podcasts to pop culture. Some are in English, some are in German. There's talks that cover anything from audio processing, if you're trying to find a marketable skill, or streamlining your podcast process. There's all kinds of information there. All the information is in the description. Go check that out. And as usual, please subscribe and leave a five-star review on your podcast platform of choice. And really a follower anywhere helps us continue to provide this platform for independent musicians and provide you, the listener, with more insights, the behind the scenes experiences and advice from independent musicians on how the industry works and what the world of music is like here in Berlin and Europe. Thank you very much for listening and the episode will come now. Are we on? We're on. Oh, shit. Nice. You want to introduce people to what's going on? Yeah. So welcome to another episode of Unsigned Berlin. My name is Mila, as you've known me for a long time. But now I'm coming on the show as Summer Girl, which is what I release my own music under. So I got to sneak on the show before I step away, which Mm -hmm. is kind of a bummer because I'll be just kind of leaving unsigned. I went home this summer to California and I tried to plant some seeds and just spread my roots there a little bit and realized that I might have a shot at going back home and trying it out. So, yeah, I, I think um, that's why I'm mm-hmm. kind of stepping away most of, the, most of all. But, yeah, um, Sebastian had the really awesome idea of letting me come on as my own artist, which is really fun, for my last episode. Yeah, which the last episode you hosted was yours, Kareem, which we recorded, we recorded like an hour and a half ago. Yeah, but you, um, didn't know, you don't know that, though. No, but you do know. But that came out. That was the last, we think... The last English spoken episode you've heard, but things might change between now and then. So probably, but we'll be continuing um, probably with me solo for a couple episodes where we figure out another co-host. But um, I talked with Anton about it, who edits these. And um, we feel like it's important to, first of all, it's way easier for me if we have a co-host because I'm doing a lot of the tech side of things and keeping track of Okay, is everything recording and what's going on with the cameras and everything while we're doing the interviews? So doing that and the interviews is things things go wrong, basically. Yeah. So having a co-host is super useful and we'll be trying to find a replacement for that. And um, we also want to keep make sure we still have a female voice in the room. Um, so, yeah, just trying to find that, trying totally. to make it work. But that will be coming in the next couple episodes, probably. We'll try out, maybe try out a couple people, see how it feels. We don't really know yet, but yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah, it's been a yeah. fun run and yeah, yeah, it's been so cool. So. Yeah, and this is, we've done like 44 episodes or something. Um, it's been almost a year, I think. I um, know. And yeah, it's been a good time. It's been awesome. Um, so yeah, before we, before we get into the music and everything, um, you spent the summer in the US. Do you feel like there's a different influence that the US has on your music? Um, versus being here in Berlin? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I definitely felt more motivated to seek out collaborations this summer. Um, I didn't work on my own music as much in terms of like, well, actually, that's not true. I did work on a few song ideas over there. And honestly, I feel like I feel a bit more free when I'm when I'm over there. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel less alternative here to like the Berlin culture because it's already so right. It's already so kind of wacky and cool and fun. Mm. So when I'm back home, I feel like I can go into that artist place a little bit more and dig deeper into kind of like the weird, more interesting side of like my music, if that makes sense. So that, but also, yeah, I was seeking out a lot more collaborations. Like things would just pop up on Instagram or since releasing Summer Girl stuff, I would get 
messages from DJs or people being mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, I'd love to have your voice and on my track. And that was really flattering and cool. And I felt more motivated to do that because also I was there in California. So my whole essence was like more, a bit more novelty, like, yeah. you know, being from being home. Yeah, honestly, it, it influences it, like as an influence. It's a really cool thing to mm-hmm. be back in California. Sure. How were they finding you, the people that were texting? Um, mostly kind of people I knew from Berlin and then coming to me on my artist, you know, from, from my releases, having heard them. But actually one collaborator, which I'm really excited for, is um, someone I found on the ads for Instagram. Like the, it mm-hmm. was recommended to me by a, by a sponsored post. Was and it, it one was of those this, ones that's like looking specifically for collaborations or is it just not at all it was like check out my like new singles coming soon or new album and it was like this really simple visual of i think like a moon or a beach and the song was so cool and i was like damn i really want to be on that so i Mm -hmm. texted and i was like i need this song give it to me please and then he's like actually here's the early download you can listen to it before it's out and i was like shit let's go so and then i said i'd love to sing on it and Mm-hmm. Actually, I got the files for it and got to play around with it. So cool. within the span of a day, I had seen or like heard a song, liked it, imagined myself on it, texted the artist, and within that day mm-hmm. was like listening it, to it in the car, yeah. writing lyrics over it, which mm-hmm. was like, that's my dream life, to be honest. Like, right. that's like all I want to do ever. So, Do you feel like that's more uh, available in... Um la san francisco in yeah California. in in los angeles like i don't know i everything's so connected it's like so mm-hmm. lonely but it's so connected at the same time so there's yeah. this really cool those energies kind of breed like i don't know this really interesting artistic drive mm-hmm. and like yeah I, I i got to meet with a few people when i was up in la from san diego where i live and it kind of opened up that world for me because Berlin has kind of given me some earned points a little bit, like Mm -hmm. having lived here and having been a presence here on my own. Like it's, it gives me a bit of a, I think a little leg up in the LA scene if I do decide to kind of go in there because I have some out, some, you know, sort of like world experience and, you know, other than my own genre. So Mm-hmm. I don't know. I hope, I hope I can bring something to the table. And actually, yeah. a lot of people thought I was German, so I was like, "Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll play that card, I guess." But I'm so not. I get. I think yeah. so. It was. It was cool. But nice. yeah, that was yeah. home. Was really good that way. Mm-hmm. Got to go to my home studio, like in terms of not home studio, but my local studio where I right. grew up. Yeah, Since yeah. I was like 13, I was recording there at little yeah. summer camps, and it was nice That's to go fun. back and be like, "Wow, I've learned so much." And <laughs> now I, I can, can actually like. Yeah, I was talking to the engineer. Yeah, we were yeah. like speaking the same language, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh my god!" No. <laughs> so that was fun, and can't can't be happier about the time I spent. It was nice, lovely. Do you feel like Berlin's had a big influence on your music, or do you feel like you've kind of been creatively still f- creating from the space of being of the US? If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think when I moved here, I had a bit of an identity crisis. So I had Mm -hmm. to figure out who I was outside of the home, you know? Um, And with that, I felt like I was stuck in this place of just always wanting to write super happy summary songs. Yeah. And I I thought of that as a bad thing because I thought it had no depth. And Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I had to kind of learn that maybe that was my that was what made me like the music I listen to is usually really happy. And then, you know, if, if I'm writing, it's, it's really dreamy and got that Mm -hmm. same kind of positive vibe. And so I was like, yeah, okay, this can be used like, um, for, for a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I think, yeah, it, I think it was also moving here was like a test for myself. Mm. And I thought of it as like, you know, if I could, if I could be and write and like function as an artist here in the same way that I can function back home, then I can be like that anywhere. 
in the world or anywhere Mm -hmm. in any situation. Like nobody can take that away from me or Mm -hmm. no place can, can knock that out of me, you know, like, so that was like when I started to write songs in the same way and with like the same rhythm that I had at home, I Mm -hmm. was like, okay, like, this is me. It's not, it's not California. It's not my place. Yeah, Yeah, totally. So that was really good. And then I can like feed into that when I want to. Mm-hmm. but it doesn't have to be like all encompassing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's nice. Well, do we want to put in a little snippet of, of uh, bad tonight? Let's do it. So yeah. for reference, bad tonight guys. And it's a bad night. I know it cause the moon rose high. There's something in your eyes. You'll never let me forget. For bad tonight. Um, yeah. When you're talking about writing, positive songs and feeling like oh it doesn't mean as much or it's like kind of cheap to write positive songs have you been actively trying to stay with positive songs and find where you can get real meaning in that because it's I think there's definitely like a an idea with creatives especially young creatives that are like oh well I don't want to solve my mental health issues because then I might not be able to make music anymore as if like stuff has to be negative to be interesting um how's your kind of experience over the last couple of years been with continuing songwriting now kind of looking at it as a positive thing that it's positive yeah totally yeah. um yeah i think i think there's definitely that and it's it's useful the whole suffering artist thing mm-hmm. is super true in a way yeah you know you have to suffer to make good art so I don't, I don't believe in that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't either now right. because I've like, you can live this balanced life and then come up with killer lyrics and it, yeah. you know, and it's like be, writing is all about putting yourself in other people's shoes and pulling things from the world, you know, mm-hmm. out of places that people would overlook. So yeah. honestly, I mean, you know, you can still be playful in your lyric writing mm-hmm. and make it and pull from sad things, you know? So yep. if and even for bad tonight, I mean, that song was like, Oh, there's just like this feeling I can't shake of this person. And I'm like, ah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's kind of, but I think I tried to deal with that angst in more of a playful way. So I would mm-hmm. like draw from different source of, of like sources of inspiration. And then, yeah. So, so uh, overall, like just because something is, is, you know, dealing with that emotion in like a playful way or, or having effective writing and like catchy writing. Cause that's the thing too. Like people are like, Oh, how can a sad song be so catchy? Cause it's like, maybe you think that it being an earworm almost cheapens it or something. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I think that, you know, like that's actually super powerful to be, to be together. So yeah, I mean, playful sad if you're like Mm -hmm. (laughs) but make it make just make it good like yeah yeah write really good lyrics and it can Mm -hmm. you can draw sources from anything even if you're living a happy life yeah and it's balanced did you have a a period of time where you were like trying to find something to write about and felt like i mean obviously everyone has something negative going on probably in most times Mm -hmm. but certain times where you're like well i can't really talk about this because i'm in a at least for me, I've had like this experience of, oh, well, I want to write things. But all the music that I listen to is about people struggling with things. And I'm not comfortable talking about my struggles with mental health. And everything else in my life is pretty good. So yeah. it's like, what, what, do I, what do I write about? I'm coming from a position of, a position of privilege. And yeah. most, music, most musicians that, um, at least that I listen to, aren't like that. Did you have a period of time where you were like, okay, how, what do I even write about? Cause I feel like I'm also like, I don't know, a couple of years ago, uh, 18, 19 and being like, yeah. I don't have life experiences and stuff like that to write about as well. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I think, I think, well, I was talking to my friend about this the other day and we were talking about how as an artist in whatever medium you work in, you're just going to have points where like, parts of your life where you're collecting and you're Mm -hmm. making and like you can't force yourself all the time to you know make when you're collecting so yeah I think the first year I was here I just did not have the same creative output as Mm -hmm. I had 
and that was because, and I thought that was because I wasn't suffering as much. Right. Um, but I think through that I was just collecting and learning and, yeah. and then there were things later that I, I could pull from, you know, even mm-hmm. if I was in a really good place, like just because I'm really happy now doesn't mean I don't remember how it felt to, yeah. you know, suffer in like a heartbreak or a, or a bad time in my life or like last fall was really hard and I was mm-hmm. homesick and like I could pull from that anytime I want. Yeah. So, or even just how to communicate that happiness in a meaningful way. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, I think maybe I have had times where I've been like, oh damn, I can't write anything right now because I'm not experiencing what I want to write about. Yeah. But to that, I, I'd say like, why, why are you forcing yourself to make when you're collecting? You know, yeah. like you're just collecting stuff now. So mm-hmm. live those experiences and then bank, put them in the bank and write about them later. Yeah. You know? And it's also like, I feel like one of the hardest things about creating, about doing uh, uh, creative work is having something to say totally. sometimes. Because it's, I mean, there's lots yeah. of things that you maybe have to say about specific things or like news things or whatever, or political things, but it's not something you really want to express or you feel like it's an individual, like, oh, this is something I want to say that's unique. And hopefully can connect to trying to find that. Yeah, there's times where you have to collect and kind of have stuff coming in to have stuff coming out. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, like got it. And sometimes your life catches up with writing, like in terms of your like I'd I'd write about something happening and then I'd live through it, oh, right. like almost like predicting the future through writing. I'd like mm-hmm. so I think that was the coolest because I would just be stuck in my room at like seventeen, eighteen, having no life experience and then i'd write about stuff that i wanted to happen and then it would happen and i'd be like the coolest thing yeah yeah is there anything are there any of the the three songs you've released as summer girl that are like that well the thing is bad tonight is my only new song both drive and rushing in are like old the lyrics Mm -hmm. like rushing in i wrote when i was 14 right and drive i wrote when i was 16 Mm-hmm. So those have been laying around for years and just collecting dust. And I just had to flush out the old stuff and the yeah. teen angst. And I was actually talking about this with our one of our past guests, mm-hmm. uh, Francesco, about, or um, Zafoida, about um, mm-hmm. just the songs you write when you're in that really raw part of your life. And yeah. I don't know, I, I just had to do those songs justice because I, I wished I would have been walking around high school hearing myself now right. you know and being like oh i finally got to use that self-expression yeah um so but, yeah it's like yeah those were both old songs that i finally got out but you so re-recorded i right? did re-record no actually the rushing in one was from that 16 year old mila oh damn. and then drive is me now singing mm-hmm. lyrics i wrote when i was 14 or yes no rushing in yeah rushing in is is like yeah it's all from the 14 to 16 age era. range era. <laughs> yeah. but then drive is lyrics like my vocals now pretty right. recently so. when you were recording that did you feel like you were revisiting 14 year old yourself or like um coming at it from a different perspective of like oh now i've either had these experience or now i have a different viewpoint and the performance maybe feels like it's talking maybe to the younger self or something like that yeah um for drive it was it was really cool because I was like wow this is this is really nice writing and I like it but it's very simple and floaty and of the Mm -hmm. era so I I got to kind of make new I came up with some new parts on the spot when I was recording to kind of add which was really fun so Mm -hmm. that was cool but for rushing in those lyrics are pretty much the same as they were when I was like 16 Mm-hmm. Um, from when I was 14, having wrote, written it at 14. So, yeah. yeah, I think I was able to revisit them. I mean, for for rushing in, like the four on the floor kick is like pure Berlin. Like that right. didn't come until much later. Oh, okay. So that was definitely like my Berlin influence seeping mm-hmm. into the old like version of, right. you know, of myself as an artist. Also pre being able to go out and experience but, dance music where it yeah it's meant to be experienced that's so true yeah. like having not really been experiencing dance music mm-hmm. in that same way that's so true is there was there anything when you were revisiting it 
that you were like, oh, I used to do this when I was writing and it worked really well, but I've left it behind since then. And maybe I want to bring back that approach. Or was um, it like, oh, I see how, like, how even I've, if it's good, but grown. I see, yeah, exactly how much I've grown. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm definitely better at, at, um, what is it? Like bridges now. I just, I hated mm -hmm. writing bridges back then. So right. I just didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I think, I think my, the catchiness is really good. Like I, I love, I love how, how earwormy that those ones are mm -hmm. both drive and uh, rushing in. But I think I've become a lot smarter with the, with the earwormness. Like I've, I've, and I, and I'm able to fit more into a smaller space, if that makes sense. Like yeah. I, I drew out, I drew things out longer where mm -hmm. I could have put more info. Like, I feel like that's what bad tonight is. It's like really rich in terms of it. The, it's so percussive, like the vocals mm -hmm. itself, they're so percussive to right. me, you know, especially like the bridge, like breaking my heart. And I say, thank you. Like, it's just, it's almost sounds more than words. And mm -hmm. I, I think I've gotten better at that instead of the super dreamy floaty yeah. thing that was both rushing in and drive. Mm -hmm. So yeah. This is also your first releases were this summer. So were there things that when you released it, not that it in any way means that things were bad, but where you looked at it and you were like, this is something that I, it's important to me that I improve on because even though I'm proud of this, like this element of it needs to get so much better. And I just really want to spend time like practicing that. Yeah, for sure. Always. What was it? Um, if you're happy to say, cause also I, yeah. I don't yeah, know. no, mm -hmm. uh, my mic, I just, I know I have good ears. I know I do. And mm -hmm. I'm going to probably say that because I do. But mm -hmm. I just, like, getting your songs to, to sound mixed at that level of, like, pro level yeah, yeah. is just so, and, like, mixing your own vocals. And then on the on the back of that, you know, a lot of the vocals and stuff had been recorded on my old mic, which was not the best quality. Mm -hmm. Um so I would just listen, like, for example, I listened to Dominic Fike's new album this summer. And I was just Weird. like, fuck. I just, I want my songs to sound as crisp. I want a $4 million record deal. <laughs> seriously, though. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I just want, I just want them to sound crisp, like in that silvery pop goodness yeah. way. Because right now, I think sometimes I can, my, my stuff can be warmer and rounded. And I just, I wanted them to be edge, like all edge. Hmm. and they just couldn't but that was also because i wrote them at a, a time when i w when it was meant to be warmer and rounded and yeah, less refined true. but like now i just want them to cut you know mm -hmm. and i just i'm almost there i'm almost there i can feel it doing the I last 10 percent of that learning is the it's like, the hardest part so it's 100 yeah. times harder than doing the first 90 percent. i think yeah totally and like there's some mixes that I just like unbelievably perfect. Like the the Dua Lipa song on the Barbie movie. Mm -hmm. Like it's not my genre at all, but I listen to it and like the production and the mixing is so perfect to the point of like I don't know how how the fuck they did this. Well, that's my I mean, it's dream. also Mark Ronson. Doing oh yeah, he's what he yeah, does. He's but uh, but yeah, yeah. No, that's totally my dream though. Is like mm -hmm. if you could put me in whatever room there was to write the Barbie soundtrack. You know, <laughs> it's like, a fun project to get as well. I know there was like one of the lines from I'm just Ken is like I'm just Ken I'm just Ken and I'm enough and I'm good at doing stuff and I'm like I wish I could have written that because <laughs> that's so clever and so good and it's so simple and effective mm -hmm. and I'm like such a fan of the simplest way to convey something is like yeah. the best so if I could have been in that room, Mark Ronson, I would have made I would have made it as good, if not better. No, but I just I I think that soundtrack is so good. Yeah. So yeah, but it's it's that last ten percent that's always of like the hardest. industry industry geniuses. Yeah. Where yeah, you can really really hear the difference. Just put me in a studio and like fund me, man. Like, <laughs> like give me time. Like, it's also like the I years make of this. time, right? Of like yeah. practice where you can be good, but there's nothing that's the same as like. If you look at like Manny Marroquin's like discography of mixing and you're like, this is just, he's just done so much work and it's just years and years and years of 
insane mixing. But mixing something you want to keep doing for yourself. You don't want to outsource it. I'd love to, honestly, once I find someone who I really trust. Mm. Um, and I, But I also think my favorite would be to be in the room while yeah. they're doing it. Because I did that on Drive with Alban, right. uh, with Mrs. Albus, mm-hmm. who we interviewed. And it was so much fun because it, you know, like I had an idea and I was kind of like halfway there and he was like, oh no, I, I got it. So that was really fun. Um, yeah. I definitely do that again. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, honestly, um, I hate and love mixing my own stuff because you hate, oh, yeah, yeah. I hate and love it. So mm-hmm. it's just going to be what it is. Yeah. Mastering is another beast, but that'll be outsourced. Won't be soon. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm going to learn more. Yeah. <laughs> ah, For so. the hyper pop, hyper pop project you've yeah. been working on, it's very much, uh, more hands off. Is that how you would say that? Kind more of. Hand, it's less hands on. Yeah. Less hands on sounds better. In terms of you're doing the songwriting, you're not doing the production and the mixing, if I'm right. No, yeah. Um, I'm like, and all of that. How do you feel like, how's that experience been versus self recording, producing, mixing, everything for Summer Girl? I or love with it. Albus? Honestly, if mm-hmm. I could just do that, it's like, it's, it's the coolest and it's such an outlet. And on it's like my fa- it's one of my favorite things. But I think if I didn't have both in my life and mm-hmm. as an artist, I would suffer. Yeah. Because I, I really need to get the stuff I hear in my head out in mm-hmm. the way I want to. So yeah. production helps with that. And the, all the technical knowledge I've learned has is like a huge confidence booster because mm-hmm. I can finally do that. Yeah. But man, the hyper pop stuff was so fun. Like it was just because also I, I couldn't be I couldn't be like limiting myself in the same way I do when I'm producing my own stuff. Like I had my role was it ended at a certain point. Yeah. So there was like this awesome hands like this freedom mm-hmm. like I had and I'd walk in the session with the two guys, um, Jesper and Olaf, and they're just the coolest and so chill. And we'd write songs super fast and and I, I didn't have to be critical of myself yeah. at all. Like it was like the freest I've ever been writing. Mm-hmm. I, I can't like, I cannot gush about it more. It's like the, it has been one of the most amazing experiences in terms of collaboration I've ever had. And nice. if I could do it forever, I would. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just freaking awesome. I love it. Bef- and before we talk about it more, can yeah. you maybe, cause hyper pop still, I guess, relatively niche for a lot of people, especially. <laughs> I mean, it feels like a whole world, but then also I didn't really know about it before studying music. Mm-hmm. And I think most, the majority of people aren't in the world of electronic mm-hmm. kind of music. So if you like listen to indie, then you probably don't know what it is. Totally. Um, can you maybe explain a little bit what it is and then we can listen to a snippet yeah. and then we can talk more. Two snippets for me? <gasps> no. Crazy. Um, yeah, Hyperpop's awesome. I've been listening to it since for a while now um before it got more mainstream of course because i was i was (laughs) here first guys (laughs) (laughs) excuse me but yeah i yeah it's it's like pop music turned up to a thousand basically it's and it's really in it's it's got like it's much more it's much it's very harsh industrial yeah it's got that i I mean sophie like she is just I didn't even learn about Sophie, who is like the creator almost of the genre until later. Mm-hmm. I had I've been listening to, I think, softer versions of hyperpop, but still very sped up and super coming at you from all sides. But I think yeah. my my taste got much more experimental and industrial, like mm-hmm. since then. Because Sophie um, is yeah, um, hard to listen to. I yeah, <laughs> I'm, but it's I'm not crazy because I and... love it. Yeah, like I, I appreciate like that. that she was sort of, or they were the um, sort of originators of the genre. Yeah. Um, but the music is really, really harsh, really so like rough. And I like some hyper pop stuff, but not theirs. And yeah, like, fair. Totally fair. Um, but yeah, it's generally like pretty fast BPM. Am I right? So that, exactly. Yeah. And that came from, I'm obsessed with Nightcore. Like, what is Nightcore? 
it's just sped up versions of songs. Like it's oh, like okay. a genre. It because now they have like nightcore people release stuff or sped up versions of songs. Yeah, basically, yeah. they release them now, mm-hmm. which is like thank God because I love it. <laughs> but I, I literally like, like how I spend my <laughs> nights, guys. Is I go online. There's this nightcore generator app. Right. I'm subscribed to it. And I get to download the versions of the songs I make, which is basically I just plug in a song and it makes it faster and I I detune it or like mm-hmm. tune it up and speed it up. And I can adjust the setting so it's like it it's almost like you can listen to the song in a new way every time. Yeah. But I just I wish I love sped up versions of songs. Like fast, like like stupid fast. Like I am chip so monkey. The opposite and it's side honestly of this. I know. But it's like, so good. It's cool that it, I love that that's an option where you can have like yeah. the Nightcore app is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and having stuff on YouTube is also nice. Like I like the yeah. slowed and reverb stuff I sometimes. I love the, the slowed and reverb is But great. when it's on an artist's profile, I always feel like it's a cheap, like get me more streams kind of thing. Or if I click on a song, I'm like, oh, I want to listen to this song. And then I'm like, this is weird. Oh, it's the sped up version. <sighs> I got to go like find the original version again. That's actually fair. There's no. like... Yeah, I, I I totally get that. I so, think so it's that only was the been original yeah part of why Hypo has a higher BPM. Maybe there've just I been kind know. of like crosses, I think. Mm-hmm. But I think it's I think it's more how I got into hyperpop because it right. was like it was basically just pop sped up with mm-hmm. crazy sounds, and I was like, oh, this is cool, you know. Yeah. But yeah, to be honest, I actually kind of agree with you. I like when there's only a few examples that I like the sped up original version. Like mm-hmm. by the actual artist on Spotify, like there's this Afro Afrobeat soca or like song called um, Sugarcane, I think, and they had an they had an official sped up remix right. of their song, and it like it's mind blowing. It's so good, and is they're it, oh, it's amazing. Has it been? Is it like they sped up stems probably and then remixed the whole thing for a different sound, or do you think they just sped up the track? I literally think they just sped it up. It's yeah, yeah. it's so good and it's perfectly done. And mm-hmm. I I listen to that more than on my own. Right. stuff which is great so um but i i actually like i prefer want to go on youtube and listen to the mm-hmm. nightcore or sped up versions of stuff because they usually have like a cute little anime thing on <laughs> yeah, it like and a like loop of anime yeah and scenes. and i just think it's so cool yeah so i like I, I like that i like that has it's like immer- made a whole sub genre or like a whole yeah, thing yeah. emerge from Mm-hmm. That on so it's a it's a sped up bpm really harsh sounds industrial or digital i feel like usually yeah um totally are there any other like signifiers you feel like of hyperpop maybe the songwriting or the vocals i feel like maybe identity and technology is a big part of it or anything like that yeah songwriting with hyperpop is super free and like punchy and playful and fun mm-hmm. and yeah writing for it, it's like the coolest because you can write things that don't make sense and yep. you're free to do that which is mm-hmm. awesome so i had like a lyric from one of the hyper pop songs that's like the stars go boom and it's like i would never write that in my mm-hmm. own things but it just it works and it's like yeah. cool and yeah. let's do it so do you want to put a snippet of that so people know um yeah of uh, you break my heart i think it's called yeah you break my heart okay So just tell me when you're about to break it. I know cause I'm gonna hate it, yeah. Ooh, oh, no. And that was You Break My Heart. Yeah. Um, there's also a very different uh, kind of approach on what the topic is, I feel like, in Hyperpop. Were you deciding with the guys you were collaborating with, um, sort of, this is what we want this to be about, or more improvising? That was all my decision. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I think I love. I love a lot about them. One of the things mm-hmm. is that, like the the songwriting, like the writing part, is completely in my right. in my corner, and having that control is is great. Because usually, yeah, it's just my own writing style. Then, yeah. uh, but then like a freer, more experimental version where I can take more risks, mm-hmm. and they're allowed. So. Yeah, I would I would come up with the the themes most often, and that would come from okay, oh, this is probably what it's this is about, you know. Right, which <laughs> like, is kind of what kind of things. Um, just I mean, there's like 
one of our songs, Drowning, and it's like called Drowning. And that's like the main hook is like about drowning in a season that's like really cold and you're mm-hmm. kind of fighting to get out. And so that's, that's, it's like angsty and wintry, which was exactly the time I wrote it. And it's coming in October? Maybe? Yeah, October. early October. So just Sorry, in time yeah. for. Yeah. I know for people for to <laughs> be sad, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> including myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, there was like that, and then break, break my heart, and then drowning, and um, yeah, I think what's the other one? Oh my god, I can't believe I'm forgetting my own. My yeah, own was, you did just you said them just before we started recording. I literally sent them. Oh, broken, broken. Anyway, we you you will, you will see. <laughs> gonna you're gonna see that's actually a very common thing that's a Mm -hmm. really common symptom of writing is forgetting forgetting. (laughs) (laughs) because i'm already on to the next no anyway Mm -hmm. um yeah what was Uh, the kind of um writing process like for that were you doing it in a studio space so you could record straight away vocals uh or was it kind of like writing at home, building the track at the same time, and then taking it to a studio space to re-record vocals, or what did that look like? It was four-hour slots of Mm -hmm. time we had at our school facilities. And we just both, we all rented, one of us rented it, and we had rented a mic, and we were Mm -hmm. ready. And we'd have sessions where where I'd write three songs in four hours. Right. um, Or two, or one. Mm -hmm. Uh, But... I think having that time is and having that limit is yeah. and was the big, big upper. Like it was just awesome. So yeah. yeah, having that limit is really important. And they they were collaborating on production, right? They were. What did that first of all were they what were they using? Um they both use uh FL Studio and Logic. Right. And then they were bringing in ideas that were archived from them old ideas or Mm -hmm. check out this new thing i made or you know hey i have this idea and i think you'd really be really good for it like Mm -hmm. i just i love that but it was like working on one track at a time yes with whoever's laptop it was yes and then throwing ideas out not like there was a the master classes those master class like things you can Mm -hmm. you can uh, uh subscribe to there was one for Timberland, talking about production. Yes, oh, so good. And I like Timberland's music, but the masterclass was weird. I felt like it was a, I felt like it was a waste of money. But um, Ooh. but there was like I a, still like you, masterclass. <laughs> you can give me a masterclass. You, um, I don't know what Sebastian wants to do. But it was no, that's it. it was interesting I that they it. were sat. I remember being like two guys sat with separate laptops, and then Timberland kind of more writing. That the idea of like sending the stems back and forth and stuff i was like i don't know how like it's really cool that they found a way that that works but i have no idea how i would do it yeah that's kind of what we did though because like we would be producing with jesper and fl Mm -hmm. and then um olaf is mainly in logic and logic's main thing is vocal recording Mm -hmm. fl just does not have the strength and power and Mm. to do that at the level we wanted so We'd switch over to Logic for the vocals, put in the stereo track of the whole song, and I'd I'd layer oh, right. vocals over it, and mm-hmm. then then mix it and ultimately like mix it into the real track. So, yeah. yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So fun! Like I just gave mm-hmm. them vocals and they did whatever they wanted with them. Yeah, which is so nice. Like, did honestly. you when you're doing summer girl stuff? There's a lot of stacked summed vocals. If, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go. Um, there's a lot of stacked vocals. Did you feel like that carried over to the hyper pop thing at all, or was there more emphasis on just like this is one line and it's going to be heavily processed? So there's not like there's still pressure on it, obviously, but not in the same way. Yeah, that is the other part of hyper pop. It's super heavily processed, yeah. which I love. As a from a vocalist perspective, so it's fun. so chill. So it's fun. like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> amazing. If I could yeah. do that every time, I would. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't want to because I want to do my own stuff too. But um, no, for for drowning, like there's this one. Well, I I was a choir kid, so I'm like, any opportunity to like rounds or crazy coming harmonies, in at all sides, harmonies, starting at different places, ending at different times, like. 
I am such a sucker for that. So mm -hmm. I did that in drowning and it was, it came out great. Cool. Um, so I'm, I'm happy about that. So it doesn't always have to be layered, but a lot of them is just, are just takes put together. Like, and yeah. they somehow worked. Which, so, what, do you, what do you mean? Takes, like, like takes different takes. Like I wasn't hearing myself do like, mm -hmm. you know, I was just stacking things on top of each other, not knowing what, what how was, they would work together. Right, yeah, yeah. And, but they did. So nice. that was cool. I'm down. <laughs> like, great. You know, yeah. but I think somewhere in my brain, I'd like to think I'm logging all that. And I'm like, yeah, but it's, I've got it, but it's I so much less likely to work. Yeah. Like, so if it yeah. does, it's like, Awesome. Yeah. You know, but it's, cool. it's a little pat on the back as well where you're like, oh, I can, I'm good. I, my ego is so, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't honestly, like, yeah. But it's also cool to feel like, oh, this is actually something I'm, I feel like I can say that I'm good at. I finally have Which experience is, to talk about it. You know, yeah. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll get a reality check soon when I, <laughs> when I'm, <laughs> but you could be good at stuff and bad at stuff and there's a big scale, but it's cool to, I feel like, especially learning music. It's such, it's such a big thing that you're you're just bad for a long time. Yeah. And then I mean, you've been spend you've been spending basically all of your time doing music for the past two or three years, mm -hmm. which is a big difference to when you're kind of learning it in school. Yeah. And finally getting to a point where you're like, oh, I'm, I can say that I'm good at this, and it's not ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I think I'm the best, but you can be proud of what you're doing. Finally, it's a really big like cool position to be in i feel like yeah totally yeah for sure how's it's, your oh yeah go for me go. no it's like your specialty like, yeah yeah this is my like... specialty and i'm good at this and if you want me on your project i will do this for you and... yeah wow. yeah anyway, <laughs> yeah it's a cool that's... moment to have <laughs> yeah um did you have any like moment like that for production maybe with the with these singles or more recently or anything like that where you did something and you were like this is it's new that i can do this um all the time um like in terms of wow this is new i just figured this out yeah kind of. or you just make a song and you're like oh this is just so much better than it, stuff i was making before or it came out so much easier or yeah like the production wasn't a hindrance for the first time or something like that yeah i mean i i don't think i would release something if i didn't have that moment right in it mm -hmm. so yeah, all of them had their own kind of things. Uh, bad tonight, but also at the same time, you're just such your own critic. So yeah. I was like, I had a, I had really strong feelings about all the songs where I was like, oh, I don't know if it's good enough. I don't know. Da, da, da. And mm. Bad tonight. I was like, yeah, it, it doesn't, I'll, I'll put it out. Cause it's like, it's like not too precious. Yeah. Like it's not that precious. And mm -hmm. honestly, it's been great. And it's a, I, I'm proud of it. So. And like in terms of production, it was me playing bass in my bed, basically. Mm -hmm. So, in terms on of a, on an actual bass, like yeah. guitar, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, nice. And so, and I had that idea, and it was inspired by an artist I love. Her, his name is uh, Contra Dash, and I heard one of his songs, and I was like, I want a bass line like that. So I was like, All right, cool. And mm -hmm. then, um, so the, how easy it is in that way, like in in making it, was the big breakthrough for right. that song. And then for the other ones. It was more, more like, wow! I'm so happy I could finally do it justice. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. In production wise, with my skills that I've learned. Yeah. Nice. Well, we've recorded for about 45 minutes, and I think that's Dang. a good, good spot to leave it. Yeah. Maybe. It's so addicting, honestly. This it's, is. So it nice. moves so quickly. This is great. I could yeah. do this forever. But we <laughs> well, another time there'll yeah, be. It's all good. Yeah. It'd be cool to have. Um, I forget the names, but the collaborators for the hyper pop project. Yeah, it'd be um, their name. Like their official name in terms of the collaboration is the Opera Sucked, so go check them out. They That's have, cool name. right? Yeah. <laughs> they have a really cool. They already have some singles out um, prior to mine. Nice. Or yeah, prior to my releases and collaborations. So please check them out. They're great producers. I would like, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell you the wrong thing, guys. <laughs> They're great. And do you have any other dates coming up for? for releases or um for either project um to be honest by the time this comes out it's more than likely that i will have another release planned single wise um nice. but at the moment i'm not sure it'll be in the description it'll be in the, in the yes it'll be there yep i'm just so excited i'm like 
once you got that first, you push through that first song release barrier, you're like, yeah. shit, I can do this. I can do it now. So yeah. at this point, I'm just trying to get as much as I can. And yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but thanks, Sebastian. This has been awesome. Thank you. Thanks for helping for almost a year. You know, we had fun we had a good time yeah it was fun um, and while we're still still not paid um we hope we hopefully <laughs> will be soon um yeah. and there's been lots of other advantages and positives to doing it's been fun been able to talk to a lot of really interesting people a lot of people that i'm really happy to have met that we've been able to just text and be like hey you're cool can i talk to you mm -hmm. please please <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, not and that. There's been a lot of advancement as well. I feel like both of our interviewing skills have improved significantly since our first episode with Guada. Shout out Guada for oh, Guada. for coming out for the first. I know one. I'm a better conversationalist in general. Same. Like I, I ask when I'm asking people questions, I'm like mm -hmm. in the interviewer's position. Yeah, sometimes I feel Lately. like if there's like a really if I'm just having a conversation that's really dry, then you can which start. just happens. Then sometimes you can be like, oh, I know how to move a conversation forward now which is mm -hmm. cool you can pull out the big guns and yeah. interview them but seriously like it's yeah. one of the most um underrated skills asking yeah. questions and an un unexpected thing to learn as well like i didn't think interviewing was nothing but the conversationalist part of it that comes with it is really interesting to interesting to learn yeah um it's been awesome thank yeah. you guys it's thank been yes. a great run oh, yeah and also really 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 thank you to the people who are listening the people who are following and watching the clips and all of that it wouldn't be possible without you it won't be possible to continue without you um so thank you very much thank you guys thank you sebastian thank you Mila. for the awesome questions Sweet. thank you awesome. this has been summer girl on unsigned berlin <laughs> <laughs> go check it out mm -hmm. okay cool